Hey everyone, it's Mr. Jensen. Today I'd like to go over a review of what we did in class the past two days, per usual. Um, latitude and longitude. So let's check this out. I have two popular maps that you'll use for latitude and longitude in the Earth Science Reference Tables. On the left side is the Generalized Bedrock Geology of New York State, that's page three. On the right side is the Tectonic Plates, that is page five. All right, so let's get started with latitude and longitude. You need to know the basic um, visualizations, I guess, of latitude and of longitude. So I'm gonna zoom in on my world map first, which is of the tectonic plates. Uh, just a little fact about this map is it focuses on the Pacific plate or the Pacific Ocean. Um, that's the center of the map. So the center of the map is not actually going to be your prime meridian, which on many maps, that's like the popular middle section is the prime meridian. Um, the prime meridian instead is all the way to the right where you see zero. So let me get my pen out. Um, and here is our prime meridian, I'm circling it in red. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in on this, try to get the best kind of like visuals I can. All right, so we'll start with latitude. Latitude is going to be your numbers on this left side and the right side of this map. Latitude runs from east to west. My line is not gonna be perfectly straight. I'm gonna do my best. All right, what I just made here, this red line here, is what we call the equator. This is the first or the zero value for latitude. Latitude starts at zero, it goes to 90 degrees north, that's the North Pole, and 90 degrees south, that's the South Pole. All right here, all the way on your right side of this map is your prime meridian. I'm gonna draw this one, not gonna be perfectly straight. Ooh, pretty wavy. Here is your prime meridian. This is the first meridian, prime, and it is valued at zero. This splits the world into the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. So what I like to do, because the prime meridian is on the right side, I like to go to the tops and label with directions. So my first little bit here, zero to 20 on my right side, this is going to be a little sliver of the Eastern Hemisphere. So I put a little E there. All right, then I'll go back. If you go more east on this map, you actually end up on the other side of this map which is also uh, 20 east. So in these little sections, I like to just put E's for east, E, E, E. And I'll do that for all of it, just so I'm reminded that this is the Eastern Hemisphere. All right, then we have another special um, number here. We have 180, I'm gonna do it in blue. That's what I did in class. We have 180. This is special uh, meridian because this is the international date line. So I'll draw this one in as well. This is the international date line. So if you do travel east from the prime meridian, right, you travel all the way across, you are going to end up at the international date line. Once you cross the international date line, then it becomes the west. So I put W's here just to help me out. All right, so I think splitting the longitude east and west is a little harder than splitting uh, the latitude north and south because this is kind of basic. If you're above the equator, then this is north. If you are below the equator, this is south. It's not um, aligned strangely. It's, it's right in the middle, unlike the prime meridian, which is off to the right, most maps, some maps you'll see, it'll be right in the middle. All right, so how do we use them? How do we use latitude and longitude to find places? So in class we did uh, an activity where you got two sets, of, you got one set of coordinate, I guess, you got latitude and longitude coordinates, and you had to find like a certain place. Uh, the opposite is a little easier to explain though, where you're looking for a place and you're giving its coordinates. So let's, do a practice of just that. So I'll go right in the middle because it's 
you know, kind of you're probably focused on the middle here. Let's find the coordinates, latitude and longitude, of the Hawaii hotspot. So if you're looking for the latitude and longitude of a particular place um, on any map, you want to kind of go to like the center of it. So you don't want to use the words. You'd rather go like somewhere right here. So I'm going to try and draw my best circle. And the pen is really, really thin because I'm zoomed way out so that the maps look clear. All right, so uh, you want to start with latitude because latitude always goes first when you're writing coordinates. So your first set of directions should be north or south, no matter what your answer is for coordinates. So in order to figure this out, you need to at least draw a line all the way to the right or all the way to the left. So I'm going to draw a line all the way to the right. That's just what I prefer. So if I draw a line, my best line, not perfectly straight. Try. There we go. Um, I will zoom in on this and we'll have to estimate. So it's in between 20 and 30. It's below 30. Um, it's above 20. So it must be a value of 20. So if I zoom in there, we can kind of estimate and it gets a little blurry. Sorry about that the PDF on this program. So I would say this is probably, if I'm estimating, um, I'm gonna be really specific. Most of the time you don't have to be, but let's say it's like 23. Can we agree with that? It looks a little below 25. It's probably like 23 degrees north. All right, so that's our first coordinate and I'm gonna write it just at the top here. So for our Hawaii hotspot, we would say this is about 23 degrees north. And these are just rough estimates, remember. All right, then you would do a comma, technically. If this is like a part two. Now we wanna figure out the longitude. And for the longitude, you have to draw a line at least all the way to the top or at least all the way to the bottom. You could do a full line if you wanted. So I'm gonna take the Hawaii hotspot and I'm gonna draw all the way up the straightest line that I can draw. That's pretty good. Oop. So it's pretty decent, I'd say. It's not great, but it's good. And just so you know, you could extend this all the way down. You're gonna get the same number at the bottom as you would as the top. And if I drew this all the way to the left, I should get the same number as I would all the way to the left, which I do. All right, so we're focused on longitude, which is east or west. I'm going to zoom in so we can make an accurate estimate. All right, I apologize for the blurriness. Maybe I'll find a better program for PDF editing. So it's in between 140. Um, if you're in the Western Hemisphere and you are moving to the left on this particular map in the Western Hemisphere, all the blue section, your numbers are getting higher. So it's in between 140, 160. In the middle would be 150. This is very close to 160. So I'm gonna estimate that this value here is probably 158. I think we could agree with that. So for my final answer, I would write 158 degrees, and this is west. So 23 degrees north and 158 degrees west is the latitude and longitude I would use to discover or locate the Hawaii hotspot. Great. All right, so then this is a really zoomed out map. This is the whole entire world. So we just happen to have 23, which is a whole degree, is how you'd explain that, and 158, which is a whole degree. So what happens when you zoom in on a map? So for example, we have page three. So page three is just the state of New York, which is a lot more zoomed in, right? Maybe like from like a satellite image, than the whole entire map, which is the whole world. This is just one state. So here, we were, go we're gonna use minutes to describe areas that are in between whole degrees. So for example, I think 42 and 43, or let's focus on, how about 43 and 44. So let's focus on 43, 44. I'm gonna zoom in a bit, might get a little blurry, hope not. Uh, and I'll circle these so we see what we're talking about. He's orange. All right, and here is 43, here's 44. So what if I put a dot kind of like right in the middle? 
And this is just for your latitude. We're just focusing on latitude. So this dot that I just drew here, if I draw out to the side, right, is not directly on 43, is not directly on 44. So how can we describe this particular latitude? So as you go up in New York State on this map, which is directionally, compass direction, north, as you go up north, the numbers are increasing. So you would take your original whole degree, this is 43. This is in the 43 range. So this would start with 43, 43 degrees. But it's on its way to 44. So we estimate using minutes. So the number of minutes at the original 43 would be zero. This is zero minutes and you do a dash, that means minutes if you're using latitude longitude. And the number of minutes for 44 would be 60. Because after 60, it's a new whole degree, which would be 44. All right. So like, for example, the highest number that you could be, the highest amount of minutes before you go into the 44 degree latitude range would be 43 degrees north and 59 minutes. That would be just under 44 degrees. So let's finish this. If this is zero, this is 60, they have tick marks to help you. And these tick marks in the middle of each degree represent the halfway point. So the halfway point in between zero and 60 would be 30 minutes, All right? So this random orange dot that I drew doesn't even make it really to the halfway point. So this is where you'd have to estimate. So you wanna estimate. And if we wanna break it down even further, halfway from 30 to 60, and I'm estimating right here, would be like 45 minutes. And halfway from 43 as a whole degree to 30 minutes, 43 and 30 minutes, would be like 15 minutes. All right, so if I was gonna estimate this dot, our original dot, and draw it out to the side, I have a number that's somewhere in between uh, 15 minutes and 30 minutes. So I would say that this is 43 degrees, which I already have written, and let's estimate. How about 20 minutes north? So our final answer, if we were looking for the latitude of this particular dot, would be 43 degrees and 20 minutes north. So the same thing works with longitude. So I'm gonna zoom out and that orange dot, let's use this orange dot again. So let's zoom in on this orange dot. And let's draw a line up to our longitudinal lines. So our longitudinal lines, they run north and south, but they measure east and west. So I draw my line as best I can to the top. All right, so now I can zoom in on this. All right, and it's in between 74, whoops. Can I draw? It's in between 74 and 75. On this map, west is to your left. As you go left on this map, you are going west. So your numbers increase to the west. So this would be 74 and zero, right? And then this value would be 74 and 60, but that's what 75 is. So the highest number you could have in between 74 and 75 for a longitudinal value, 74 degrees and 59 minutes west. All right, so for longitude, they also include the halfway marks. So this halfway mark would be 74 degrees and 30 minutes. All right, so this one is basically right in between 74 degrees and what would be 74 degrees and 30 minutes. So I could estimate this value of our orange dots longitude in New York to be maybe 74 degrees and 15 minutes west. So all together, I'm gonna to zoom out so we could focus on our dot here. I'll change the pen color, I'll use blue. Our final answer for our orange dot here, and we're estimating, would be 43 degrees and 20 minutes north and 74 degrees and 15 minutes 
west. All right, so that's just a random dot example. Usually in the regents or like a practice question or something like that, you're gonna be looking for a town. So you would do the same thing I did with the Hawaii hotspot, but you just have to use minutes and, um, yeah, you just have to use minutes. So for example, if I do that with Elmira, I'll do this quick because this is a long video already. Um, I have Elmira, I'll draw at least down and then at least left or right. So if I draw, ooh, that's such a bad straight line. But it's still gonna work out. It's just estimating. So here's 42, it's a little bit above 42. So Elmira could be 42 degrees and 10 minutes north. And here we have 76 and 77. And 76 degrees and let's say maybe just a little bit more than 45. I would say 45 or 50 minutes west. All right, and just a, a, a quick tip, everything in New York will be northwest. We live in the northwest quadrant of the world. All right, so thank you if you watch this video and you're reviewing for a quiz or a test or just for general knowledge. I appreciate it. All right, have a good rest of your day. See you later.